years ago, I read a book by Thich Nhat Hanh. It's called The Art of Power. And really all I remember about the book is that he just kept instructing to breathe in, breathe out. Just come back to your breath. Breathe in, breathe out. And there was this wonderful simplicity that I found in all of it. I, I you know, it, I can kind of understand now what was happening. You know, it was he was delivering me from the story. You know, just like just just focus on your breath. Just just leave all that suffering behind and just have this have this now experience, right? And then of course, I mean, it's a good practice. It's a wonderful practice. It's a lovely practice. I, I still, I mean, I. I use the practice now. Every day I use the practice that he introduced me to. Um, he has all these different titles with like, like how to fight, you know, like the art of power. And they're really just to kind of draw you in, you know, <laughs> just like, oh, I want power. Oh, I want to learn how to fight. But then it's just always like, breathe in and breathe out. <laughs> and say to yourself, breathing in and breathing out. <laughs> you know, just like experience this moment. Find yourself now <laughs> anyway but it's a good it's a good practice however it's not an entire practice for sure and i don't think you know tnh is ever selling it as as the entire practice but um at some point you know the breathing it's it's so frustrating through the years as I was looking for relief trying to trying to find relief from my suffering I, I would find a practice and it would work this it's a form right it's a form that works and I find a form that works and then I want it just to work forever well can't this breathing thing just take care of the whole deal oh I gave myself to the breathing I love the breathing and then, you, and then I would find myself in some kind of agitated state and I'm like okay I'm gonna breathe <sighs> breathe okay and then it doesn't you know it's like this is not working damn it <laughs> and that's kind of how it is um but one thing that happened is i noticed like through as i would suffer and suffer and suffer you know people just want to help people want to help and people you know would say things like um well have you tried exercise you know have you tried are you are you socializing are you have you read this book you know like have you done the, and i mean if you suffer and suffer and suffer that can just get annoying after a while people just want to help at some point you're like you know so anyway people would be like well have you tried mindfulness and breathing and i'd be like yes i've tried it i've tried no breathing it's just not working right now and you know i would go into this contracted state you know this non-learning state then it, one one time I was suffering and um, my friend she said to me well, have you tried have you tried breathing Travis and there was just this moment of, of clarity and I, I kind of went back on this this teaching I where it came where I heard it I don't know but it's the, the teaching of the beginner's mind you know it's just be be the beginner's mind allow yourself to become the beginner over and over again um, as if you know nothing, like a child, right? And so I, I allowed that to happen. I was like, I just, uh, that was the Holy Spirit or the, the great source of truth or whatever. There was a moment of, of where I, I just, I looked at my, I looked at my dear friend and I said, could you teach me how to breathe? I, I don't know how to breathe. Cause, and that was the truth. I didn't know how to breathe. And this wonderful thing happened. She just... She gave me a simple instruction on breathing. And it was as if I was breathing for the first time in my life. It was as if I had just... It was as if I had just noticed the breath for the first time. The beginner's mind. To know that we know nothing. The beginning of all wisdom. We don't have to know, and we can be taught over and over and over again. Well, what about forgiveness? Maybe I don't know what that word means. Maybe I don't know how to forgive. Maybe I can learn again. Can you teach me? Could you please teach me how to forgive? Could you teach me how to release? 
Could you please teach me how to let go? Knowing that there really is no teaching outside of ourselves. Who has, who has taught us in that moment? Really, it's us, right? <laughs> and we are just connecting with this, this one who seems to be other, but they are not other, right? The teaching is coming from the one. We can't be taught anything that we don't already know because we are already limitless and boundless beings of light and love (laughs) and unchanging energy. (laughs) Could you teach me how to breathe? Could you teach me how to forgive? Could you teach me how to love? because I've obviously forgotten. (laughs) And I'm suffering, my friend. Yes. The beginner's mind. What a good place to be, right? What a wonderful gift to not know. The gift of not knowing. Ah, I don't know, and I'm so happy about it. (laughs) I get to learn how to breathe again today. I get to learn how to forgive again today. I get to experience it as if it was the first time. And now, when I experience a dissonance, I know what that is. That's not a dissonance at all. It's it's a miracle. Behind every grievance, behind every unforgiveness, behind every moment where it seems like we've failed, is a miracle. And the beginner's mind really is is a form of forgiveness. I think every practice that works is kind of a form of the final practice of forgiveness, of releasing and letting go and acknowledging that we are not separate, right? Isn't that what forgiveness is? It's like, because when I understand that if I point my finger at another, that I'm really just pointing my finger at myself, that's why Judge not lest you be judged, right? Because you're not judging somebody else. You're judging yourself because you are one. Christ said, I and the Father are one. He understood that oneness, right? He understood that there was no separation. He understood theosis, this idea that that my I amness is the I amness. And that's not blasphemy to say, I and the Father are one, right? That's just life. That's just the way it is. And a father, if the word father doesn't work for you, that's fine. It's just words, right? It's the same teaching over and over again. When you get to when you come to the source of it all, it's the same teaching over and over and over again. It's about release, it's about acceptance, forgiveness, love, openness, kindness, generosity, nurturing. We get to learn it over and over and over and over and over again while we seem to be on this chronological timeline. There is no suffering. There is no death. There is no loss. There is no lack. There's nothing to lose here. I love to smile. I love to smile for you. I want you to be happy. And that helps me to know that I'm on the right track, right? And there's ways that we can, like, I want you to be happy. I just want you to be happy. Don't you know how happy I want you to be? You know, like, don't you see how much I sacrificed for you? (laughs) That's that one thing we can do. I just want you to be happy. That's why I give myself away to you so much. (laughs) You know, like that's, you know, just wanting, just wanting others to be happy isn't quite the whole, the whole picture, right? Sacrifice is not it, right? If we're sacrificing and sacrificing, hoping that someday we will know love, my experience tells me that that ain't never coming. (laughs) And that's okay, because who was it Craig the other day said about the dragon chase, you know? Chasing dragons. That's kind of what we're doing here, right? This practice, that practice, God is over here, God is over there, and then God is nowhere. Ah, what's wrong with me? Why is this happening to me? Why do I feel this way? 
maybe a more appropriate question is what have I done to myself? <laughs> I am not a victim of this world that I see, right? The universe that I'm experiencing is the universe that I have created for myself. The suffering that I'm experiencing is the suffering that I have created for myself. I can be free. I am the Christ. I am the Savior. The Savior lives in me. There is nothing good in me except for Him, you know? <laughs> At whatever language you want to use, right? None of it's ever coming with us, right? The words are just form. All forms pass away. <laughs> All forms pass away in the light of love. How long do we talk about it before we truly do it, right? How long do we talk about forgiveness before we truly practice absolute and unconditional forgiveness? Releasing all, letting all go, finding no fault in the other. We can become as smart as we want, we can become as rational as we want, we can think about this, we can think, we can know about this, we can know about that, we can know a, a, a hundreds of different practices and postures and methods, yet the suffering persists because what we resist persists, right? What we resist persists. So if we're, if our practices are the resistance of our suffering, guess what's going to persist? Our suffering. It's fantastic, isn't it? We, we search and search for all of these practices that we think are going to alleviate our sufferings, and yet our suffering persists. And then when we fail at the practices, then we have just another reason to be angry and unforgiving toward our guru or toward the system or toward the method that didn't work or to ourselves for failing at that, right? <laughs> Isn't it crazy? It is crazy. It's insanity, right? That's the insanity that we're that we're beginning to see through right now, right? Do your yoga. It's beautiful. Yes. Do your science. Oh God, it's great. <laughs> Do your meditation. Do your inquiry into yourself. Do your 12-step program. Do it all. But if we're doing it to relieve our suffering, it's always going to leave us disappointed. At least that's my experience. I mean, you, I'm, I have, I'm not, I have no defense. I have no attack. I'm not trying to get you to believe anything that I'm saying. <laughs> These are just words, right? This is just an effort. This is an effort to just to say hi, right? This is just an excuse to smile at you. <laughs> this is just me saying, I want you to be happy. And there's nothing you can do to add to my love. There's nothing you can do to make me love you more. There's nothing you can do that can hurt me. There's nothing you can say. I mean, if you do say something that hurts me, I mean, I'm very susceptible to still having an egoic reaction, right? But if if that is the case, if you, if you put something down there in my comments that hurts my feelings, then where's that really coming from? Is that coming from you? <laughs> It's coming from my ego, right? It's because there's a hook there. There's something. There's there's a hook. <laughs> there is that in me which is inviolate, right? Which cannot be violated. There's that in you which cannot be violated. And it is that one consciousness. It is that one being. It is that one. It is the one which has never been injured and never been harmed. And all the passing away and all the suffering that's ever happened here on this place that seems to be we call earth <laughs> i don't know what i'm saying it's okay would you rather be right or would you rather be happy i'd rather be happy <laughs> so the metaphysics that work let's do it right you see you see how much i love you <laughs> i know how much you love me <laughs> It's inevitable. We're all going we're going to release all of this all of this suffering. We're going to release all the shoulds, all the have tos, all the you betters. Ah, <laughs> oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness, right? It's already done. The forgiveness is already done, you know. Here we are. You don't have to make any pledge allegiance, pledge of allegiance. 
You don't have to do that. I mean, we do need to train our minds because we have very, very wandering minds, right? And we do have will. We do have this will and we get to choose. You know, okay, so there is no free will. There is free will. I, I, I'm not... It appears to me that I get to choose. <laughs> and it appears to me that that makes a difference. When I choose love, when I choose forgiveness, when I choose to understand that I am one with the one that I am the when I choose to forgive when I choose to release when I use my will to choose that it appears to make a difference I appear to have free will and that's enough it seems like I'm making a choice so free will not free will you know, that's just a place to argue about, right? And there's no argument in me. I have no argument. There's no fight here. <laughs> you can see that, can't you? There's no fight here. <laughs> Not right now. I mean... <laughs> yeah. I see you. I know you. You're not alone. You thought you were alone. I thought I was alone. But we're not. We're not. We're not. So share your freedom with someone today. Share your freedom with me today. That's why I'm here, I think, is, is to help and be helped, to teach and be taught, knowing that there really is no help to receive outside of myself and knowing that there really is no teaching that comes from outside of myself, right? I am. I am. There's no search. The one who's doing the searching is the one who feels like it's lost, right? And is, who is that? That's, that's the false self, right? Oh shit, I gotta find it. Oh, oh I, need, I gotta find God today. I gotta find it, right? Oh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? What do I have to do? Nothing. <laughs> you have to unlearn that. You have to let that dissolve. You have to be... That, that part of you has to become so freaking crazy and so freaking exhausted that it just surrenders. It's just like... Uh, uh, that it shakes and quivers... I don't really know how, you know, that, that's kind of what it's been like for me sometimes. Do we choose suffering or do we choose peace? Do we choose the ego or do we choose spirit? For years and years I chose right over happy because of this whole issue I, I had with fundamentalism, you know? I was right. I was right about that. I was right, damn it. <laughs> I was right. Yet I had no forgiveness. I did not have... My mind wandered. My will wandered from the forgiveness practice. Therefore, I suffered and suffered deeply in my rightness. Ah, we suffer in our rightness. How can that be? How can you be right, yet still suffer so intensely? <laughs> That's why right is so sick. That's why right is so dangerous, because we're all right from our little one perspective, right? From our, exp from our personal experience, from what we've seen and what we've known. I used to always say, experience tells me that. Well, experience is just an illusion. I'm not teaching you anything you don't already know, am I? Nope. <laughs> we get to let go. Right is the problem right now. Right is the illusion of separate self. I'm right, you're wrong. Right? I've got the right religion, you've got the wrong one. I've got the right point of view on the environment, and you've got the wrong point of view. It's all an illusion. 
every bit of it. <laughs> That's why we're so damn crazy. That's why we're so unhappy. I don't know why I get to carry this message, but I know it's right. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Wonderfully ridiculous. I forgive it all. I forgive it. I love it. I love myself. My own insanity. I mean, that's what my ego wanted, needed actually. The, the ego needs to be forgiven and loved. The ego needs to, to be seen for what it is, you know? And that ego will try to fix ego. That ego will run around in circles. That ego will go find practices and religions and this and that. That ego, that ego will go to war with other parts of your ego. That ego will go to war with other egos in the world. The macro ego <laughs> is at war with itself. <laughs> Here we go. Is that what, is that what we choose? Is that how this goes? I've got no control. Actually, I do have some control. It, when I forgive, when I release, the universe is forgiven. This world that disappointed us so much, this world that is so wrong, this world that's so screwed up, right? We begin to see that world is forgiven. You think because you go out to the mountains and find a nice stream that you're going to find peace? Have you ever been in the place that you thought you wanted to be and realized you have no peace there? It's because it has nothing to do with location, right? And everything to do with our subjective experience. I enjoy this. I, I enjoy this. We are one. We are one. We are one. No matter what your teacher told you, no matter what the other children said, <laughs> we are one. There is no separation. There is no little I. There is no little self. There is only we, and we are one. Forgive, release. Let's let this all go. I love you. Peace to you. Peace to you, my friend.